Hi everyone, how are you guys tonight? You guys, it is Thursday night and you guys are live here on the Brush by Brandy Facebook and Instagram pages. And my name is Brandy. I'm the owner and artist behind Brush by Brandy. Um, my husband is here behind the camera and he's gonna help us answer questions as we go. So if you have questions about my project, pop on and ask those. I think there's gonna be probably lots of questions tonight because I got a lot of questions this week and I'm gonna try to answer them all on tonight's live. Um, about painting fabric and then how we're going to finish this off tonight. So we might go a little bit long, but I think we're going to cover a lot of stuff tonight. So we paint here live every Thursday evening and we started uh, this project that I'm going to work on tonight. We started it last week and this project is actually an upholstered chair. Let me take all my stuff off of here. Um, so this is an upholstered chair and it started out, it's got kind of a textured fabric to it. Um, it had a, a raised pattern, a damask pattern on it. And so we laid the paint on and let me tell you what colors I've used so far. So this paint technique you can see on our live from last week. This is Wise Owl paint and the colors that I use are black, which is the dark that you see around the piping. Um, I've got Earth, which is a nice, uh, rich brown that's got a little bit of cool undertones in it. I use Iron Oxide, which is a rusty red color, and then Dijon, which is a yellow. And I actually end up mixing the Dijon and the Iron Oxide together to kind of create this camel color. Um, Marilyn's really digging the hair. Yeah, you like it? Yeah. I, I wanted to go fancy tonight. So I, it's, like, <laughs> it's like prom hair. It's like prom hair. What is it? Um, so... You know, I think the colors that are in leather are some kind, sometimes kind of surprising. This is actually when I mix this color, it ends up looking really orange. Um, but when I put it on, it's very much looks like the color of leather. So sometimes you have to mix it up to find the right shade. But I wanted to talk to you guys. I got lots of questions about painting fabrics. So um, I'm going to cover a few things before we get started working on the chair again tonight. Um, and that is, I wanted to show you some other fabric projects on different types of fabrics. I'm going to start with this one here. This is a pillow that I did, gosh, three years ago, probably. And um, the edges of it are all painted. It's sort of a, a canvas, like a duck cloth fabric. This is probably the best type of fabric you can paint. This or a, um, a canvas. Um, those are ideal drop cloth type fabrics because they don't have the raised pile. Velvets are very, are, they're, they're not impossible. Don't, I don't want you to think they're impossible. They're more challenging to put paint on. Um, anything that's got a pile to it will be more challenging. This chair did have a little bit of pile to it that presented some challenges. Um, so ideally, this is a great type of fabric. This is worn really well. It just sits on a decorative chair. I also have a transfer on here and I'm going to show you guys up close what happens to the transfer on fabric. Oh, this is a few years old. It starts to crackle. Can you guys see that? Does that show on camera? Yeah, when you first do it and then it gets out of focus because okay. the camera's trying to get it, in. It starts to crackle. <laughs> the other thing is uh, once you put a transfer on fabric, it can't be washed. As soon as it touches water, like the transfer freaks out <gasps> and it jumps off the fabric. It's not going to stick if you... Uh, so once that's once it's got a transfer on there, it's not going to get laundered. Um, so low pile fabrics, those are ideal. It does hold up well. This has a stencil on it. I used an adhesive stencil and I stenciled the letter. So this is all paint on here. Okay, so um, that was that was a nice one. This is a different option. These are my aprons, which I just will throw paint on sometimes. And this has been washed. You can wash them, but when you wash painted fabric, it gets a really worn look. So it starts looking kind of old and vintage. And um, so just be aware if it is something like, you know, like this or like this that you are going to put in the laundry, you're going to lose some of the color. It will soften the fabric back up but you're gonna get this sort of like faded look. Ignore that this has paint on it because I really do use these. Um, but you get some faded spots. It ends up looking really kind of hand printed, like a hand printed fabric. Um, another thing I've painted, these are suede. So Ugg boots, these are uh, unpainted ones and they're suede. So you can see the fabric on there, it's very soft. Um, I have a few pairs of these because I do not like my feet to be cold. This pair I painted probably about the same time, probably about three years ago. Um, I've since waxed them, so I'll put a new coat of wax on there. And I do use, uh, there is oil-based wax on here, but it doesn't crack. So 
you can tell this fabric has some give to it. It's very plush. These are nice and thick. And so even with that amount of movement in the fabric, this doesn't crack. It doesn't get brittle like that. And I think the wax helps. It keeps that moisture in there. Um, we actually just went to the snow, what, two weekends ago? And I, um, my snow boots got wet inside and I didn't want to wear them anymore. So I wore these, this exact pair in the snow. And usually the suede will keep water out for a certain amount of time. I wore these all day long, climbing in the snow, playing with the kids, and they did not have any water in them at the end of the day. They stayed drier than my snow boots did. Really quick, if we yeah. go back, there is a question in reference yeah. to your apron. How was that applied? This was just, um, I used a, a natural bristle brush, not this exact one, and this is stenciled. And I just, very little paint on my brush, and I massaged it over the stencil in sort of a circular motion. So almost dry brushing just the top of the fabric. So that's how that was done just kind of a circular motion. Um, so that wax gave me some water protection on my boots and it doesn't crack. I wear these all the time. I think they look like, they have shine to them like a leather does. So instead of looking like the soft, supple suede, now it has the shine of a leather. Can you see the difference? Okay, so that's another example. I'm gonna start peeling this stuff off because I do wanna work on the chair tonight. Another example I've never shown you guys on camera before is my couch. Okay, let me flip this around. Can you guys tell on this couch cushion, there is a painted portion on here. Um, these are my, this is my sofa in my living room and a part of it got worn. This is leather. It's not, um, sometimes leather can be um, bonded leather which is like a veneer it's like a veneer for leather and it can start to peel this is not bonded leather this is actual leather we've had these for several years we love the couches i've got three young kids i want them to be comfortable coming inside throwing their sports gear aside you know lounging on the couch so as much as i want to replace our couches i figure i'll do it when my kids are a little bit older um but part of it they, they started to wear so here's an example on this seam right here. Can you guys see that? And it just started to wear a little bit and it started looking lighter. So I'm gonna show you guys where the painted portion is on here. From here up is painted. So this is the edge of the couch and it you know, gets a lot of leg wear and stuff. From here up is all painted. And I probably painted it two years ago. It has a little mark right here where it's worn. Let me show you guys that. Can you see it? No. Can you see the little wear mark in there? And I would just need to touch that up. But leather also is a lot more supple. It doesn't have anything to bite onto. I did clean this before I put the paint on, but it's very slick. So this doesn't have as much to bite onto. So I don't think it's abnormal that I would need to come back and touch this up after a couple years. Either way, this looks a million times better than the wear that was happening on the edge of the sofa. And all I did was sit there and I kind of mixed a color. I used a dark brown and a black and there's a little bit of red in here too until I found the closest thing. I can tell in person kind of where my line is and I tried to feather it so it's not a perfectly straight line. And then I put wax on there and I wax it every once in a while. I actually use a Wiesel furniture salve on my leather and it keeps it nice and soft. And so that's an example on leather. Why do I feel like our home is a testing room? <laughs> it really is. Some of this you probably don't know that I do. Either way, the couch looks good. Really it just magically looked yeah. better one day. Okay, so let's see. I'm trying to think where we should start. Let's start with, um, with waxing this chair. So we painted this and I, I can't, I know I, people are gonna ask you to probably come in close. I don't yeah, know if you I'm, wanna come in I'm close. I'm dropping down right now. Elevator. And I forgot one thing. Just missing the elevator music. Please don't. No singing. Okay, we're gonna fix that white spot on the back of the chair, you guys. I have a plan for that that we're gonna do tonight, so don't let that panic you. Okay, so the fabric does have movement in it. Listen to listen to the sound that it makes. Okay, listen to the sound that my leather sofa makes. has that same it's it's not soft like it was like if you have just a, a, a nice soft fabric 
it doesn't, it, I don't know, it has that surface tension like a leather does. So it no longer feels like that soft, supple fabric. When I add this wax to it tonight, that's gonna give it the slick, smooth surface that finishes it off. So the first thing that I'm gonna do, I'm gonna work in this section here so you guys can see it. Can you see this okay? Mm -hmm. The other option is I can turn it and we can work on one of the sides. Um, We're just gonna cut you out of the picture. So I did two, I'm gonna say two coats of paint. Some spots it does have three coats of paint. And that's just because there were some spots I did and I didn't have the color just right and I wanted this kind of variation. So um, there's some spots that have a, a little bit more paint on them. And I also feel like up here on the seat, I'm gonna need to put more paint because when I do the treatment on the back, I'm 99% sure I'm gonna end up getting some paint on here and I'm gonna need to blend those back together. So I do figure that this surface right here, probably from here back, I'll end up just kind of touching up and blending that back in again. So let's work right here on the front of the chair and I'm gonna start out with just a really fine, soft sanding sponge. I wanna give this a light sanding um, and I'm going to use a, this is only a 220 grit and it's a worn 220 because I want to take down the chalkiness of the paint, but I need to be careful on this fabric because it has that raised design. If I sand it too much, I'm going to end up sanding the raised design more than I sand the recessed portion of the design. So I'm just going to pass over it lightly. Whoops. I did sand this in between each coat, and when I was doing it in between coats, I wasn't as careful, and I just went to ahead and used my surf prep sander. Um, but on this one, because I don't want to change the color and over sand spot, I'm just going to give it that light sanding. Okay, so that feels good, and already I can feel the difference. It feels softer. Then here has that kind of chalky feeling. It's very much like when you paint a dress or anything, you do that light sanding between coats and rub your hand over it, you can feel the difference. All right, as far as choosing types of wax for this, I'm going to use Annie Sloan wax. And I'm choosing Annie Sloan wax because her wax is like butter. It's thick, but it's still soft. Um, when it dries, it dries and it still feels supple. Um, there's all kinds of different waxes out there. So Min Wax Paste Finishing Wax. Love that stuff. It's hard as a rock. I wouldn't want to use something like that on here. I want it to stay soft and buttery. So this wax, I just know that when it dries, it stays, it's, it goes on easy, so it's gonna go on nice. And it just dries really, it stays nice and buttery. You can just use like an oil on here. Um, I use Wise Owl Paint. Their wax is a little bit more oily. Um, and, and on some furniture and some finishes, I, I love their wax, but for this, I want this thickness that's in this paste of the, of a wax. So I'm going to choose Annie Sloan for, for this. And I'm going to start off with a brush. Did I bring a wax brush out? I did. This is just a cheap wax brush from the craft store because this is going to be really hard on my brush and it's going to probably destroy whatever brush I use. I would pretty much count on that. So I'm actually not gonna use my nice wax brushes. I'm just gonna use a really cheap one on here. Um, and it's gonna take a whole bunch of wax and I'm gonna to have to wax this in stages because it's a lot of work. This is, has a lot of surface area. So I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna put it on my surface and I'm gonna really work it in. And then here's my best tip. Oh, my brush smells like furniture sap. Oh, Donna's talking facts. Yeah. A little bit of oil. She's going to have to go bake. Yeah. Yep. Um, my next tip on this is actually a nylon brush. So I like this for working the wax into the fabric. And this sounds really weird. But it kind of loosens the fabric up and it works that wax in. So... I'll, I'm just using this to kind of get it out of the container and onto the surface because because this would be like weird to stick in my wax. Um, so I'll put it on the fabric with this and then this kind of loosens up any fibers that might be, I don't know, like feeling stuck or crusted or whatever you want to call it.
Okay, so I like the nylon brush. And then I'm gonna let that wax sit on there for like 10 or 15 minutes. And I'll come back and buff it away just like I would buff a wax on a furniture piece. I mean, this is a furniture piece, so I keep comparing <laughs> it, but you know what I mean, to like a hard dresser or... Okay, so I'm gonna tell you the pros and cons about painted furniture. I think it's a great option. I would not go buy a couch brand new at the store and then paint it. But if you've got a, a couch and you just need to get a few more years of life out of it, um, you don't want to quite replace it yet, but you really want to update it. It's a great option for that. Um, it wears really well. You can touch it up. Let's say you start getting a little worn spot here. Well, you painted it, so you can touch up the paint if you don't like where that worn spot is. So it's really easy to touch up. You can re-wax it as often as you like. If you feel like you want it softer or you want to give it that supple feeling again, you can just put the wax on again. Um, I do not like like spray waxes for this. I feel like they're a little too thin. I like a that thick, this thicker paste wax on fabric. So this gives some moisture kind of to that paint and I think it's the wax that actually keeps the paint from like cracking. And it will have flex in it. I think that's a good shot right there because you can kind of see the sheen. I still have a raised relief in the fabric from the pattern that was on there. Can you see that when I push on it? You can see, kind of see the sheen that's giving off the fabric. So that kind of gives you an idea what the texture feels like. Um, and then when I come back and buff away this wax, and then this can be put back into use pretty quickly. So my intent for this is I do want it to get use. I want to show, you know, how, wear and tear. how this wears. So I think I'm going, it, I don't know, I might put this on my website and if somebody really couldn't resist it, then great. Um, but I'm probably going to put it upstairs in my bonus room. And that's kind of my kids' video game area. There's a pool table up there. Like if it survives that, then it's gonna survive. Yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a homey area. It's meant for a comfort zone. Um, and let it get worn and sat on and um, lounged on and kick your feet up over the arm. And... So this is my best tip for waxing. Uh, fabric especially when it's like a thick fabric and has pile on it like this if you have a really thin fabric this might not be what you need um, but I really want to work it into the relief of this fabric and I want to soften it up get rid of any like rigidity in it so that's how I'm going to finish this entire chair so so my pluses and my minuses uh, negatives it takes a lot of paint you guys this took probably double the amount of paint as this surface area would take if I was painting a hard piece of furniture. Because I'm diluting the paint a lot, a lot of it is saturating the fabric because it kind of creates a dye on that first coat. And so you lose some of your paint with that. Um, so I would say that it takes a lot of paint. Um, if you're doing, if you're painting like a vinyl or a leather that doesn't have that absorbency, it's gonna take a little bit less. Um, this one had a pile to it, especially, so that took even more paint because I had even, it was a thick fabric. So every paint's a little bit different, but it takes quite a bit of paint. It also is a tremendous amount of work. This chair has been a labor of love all along the way. Um, my arm wanted to fall off. I did this in a whole bunch of sessions. So, um, especially if you were doing like a full couch, it's a lot of work. So especially if you've got that absorbent fabric i've got if you if you're doing like a like a leather or a vinyl it's got that's going to be easier because you don't have that absorbency factor going on for you um so those are my cons um pluses it's way cheaper than upholstery way cheaper uh you can customize it and it doesn't look half bad i think it actually looks pretty good i think it'll be comfortable and people will want to use it it definitely looks better than it did before. So if you've got a worn piece of furniture that's really good quality and you don't want to get rid of it or you want to wait a couple more years, you just need to 
you know, I don't know, wait till the kids are out of the house or save up a little bit to, to get new couches. It's a great option to extend that life a little bit. Um, so those are kind of my positives and my negatives about painting furniture. So why do I have this big white blotch on the back of this chair? Because I have a plan. So I told you guys initially, I'm going to put decoupage on it. And that means I'm going to put a paper on it. And uh, for, I've seen this done and it always looks so pretty, but I was super nervous. So I actually messaged, um, this is meant by Michelle Paper. And I messaged Michelle and I was like, okay, give me the real lowdown. How does decoupage really work on fabric? And she was like, Brandy, I swear, it's nice. It, it lasts, it stays, it wears well. So I was like, okay, if you swear to me, I was kind of maybe behind the scenes, she'd be like, eh, 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 don't do it. You don't want to try that, you know, but she didn't. So I even showed her a picture of the chair and I said, even something this plush, it's going to be, and she was like, it's fine. So um, I pulled out a few Mint by Michelle papers. I like her papers because they have a little kind of a coating on them that gives them a little more durability than just a traditional tissue paper. And I'm gonna show you these two designs and I'll because I haven't laid them out to see which one I want to use yet. But this is the first one I was thinking. I'll put it on the back of the chair. Um, and then I'm gonna I'll, I'll only use the portion of it that fits on the chair back. And then I'm gonna blend it with paint along the edges. So that's kind of my plan. So this is one option. Okay, so you can kind of picture this would be kind of cut off down here at the bottom and then she would be she would blend really easily nicely into some blacks and I could do some browns and stuff up in the corner and that would be a good I like the colors in that one I like how she fits on there I get the full image I would just lose part of her dress down at the bottom so I think that's a contender I feel you. like using that if I ever had to sit in the chair. I, I feel can't like sit on her. I feel like since my kids are going to be using this, that this is what they would choose. Definitely yeah. children. Yeah, of course. Definitely children. It just makes want. sense. Okay, and then my next option is this girl here. Oh, she's pretty. I like how she's centered on the back of the chair. Whoops. Oh, and yeah, look the way her arm sits. Um. Uh -huh. <laughs> like she's sitting in the chair. <laughs> I can't get that corner up. Okay, I like how she's centered on the back. I, her face is beautiful. The creases in the paper will come out when I go to lay it. Uh, I would use a little bit of different coloring to blend this in. It's got a little bit of blues back here, but I would blend all this coloring in so you don't see that. I would lose the bottom part of her dress, but I get her full bust. You know, and I really like how her face looks. So I'm gonna stand back and see if I like that. I'm gonna look on camera. I think I like that one. You like best. that one the best? Which means you're gonna pick the other one. Do you have an opinion? Donna likes this one, yes. Okay. It really helps me to see things on the camera. Let me put this other one up for a second. And this is the other choice. I love the yellows in her dress. That really is what drew me to that paper. See, everybody's digging the second one. Yeah, okay. All right, we'll go with that one then. All right, so let's put our paper on. So let me fold this back up because I don't want to lose this paper. These are beautiful papers. I will use it for another project. Okay. So let me talk to you guys about what I've done underneath her. Um, I put white underneath. And the reason I chose white is because white really makes the colors in a paper pop. And I wanted the colors like of her skin um what, regardless of what paper i use i knew that i wanted the colors to really pop um if you have dark under a paper just cast undertones and having that white underneath will give me nice clean crisp colors you're not going to see any of that white um would you bend has a uh, solly at would you bend has a really nice video on her instagram page that shows you the difference between a light background and a dark background under a decoupage paper all right, I'm a little nervous about this and I kind of only have one shot at it. So, I need to lay this wet. And what that means is I need the paper to have stretch. And once you get the paper wet, it gets a little bit of stretch, but I'm not gonna be able to work it a lot. So I'm gonna get an idea of my placement. 
how far back I want this to go. And then I think I'm going to do a wet torn edge on here. Okay. What I'm going to use as my adhesive is fabric Mod Podge. You guys know I hate Mod Podge, but for fabric, I'm going to use fabric Mod Podge because I know this stuff dries with some stretch and suppleness that is good for fabric. So I've used this before on fabric. Mine's a little thickened. It's been super cold here. So let me show you the consistency. It's a paste but I'll still be able to get that out with a brush and I'll probably end up using most of this container anyways. Okay, so I like this placement here for a couple reasons. I've got her face nice and centered. The seam of my paper comes up here onto the back versus if I've got it down here, it's gonna get you know, touched and worn and I don't want that to get stressed. So I'm gonna kinda could you iron the creases out? You if you can. Want to? You can run an iron over it beforehand. But once I get this paper wet, those are going to smooth out. So a couple things I want to have. Let me get out my decoupage tool. Let me get out a brayer. Let me show you guys what I've got. And I should have grabbed some cling wrap from inside, but I do have some plastic out here. Well, this brayer has a nub on it, and I don't want to put a hole in my paper. All right. So a brayer is just a rolling pin tool and this will help me kind of smooth the paper out. This is a decoupage tool. I just want to have everything at my fingertips. I'm not sure what I'll use the most of. And then when you get Mint by Michelle papers, she gives you this extra sheet of tissue paper. Do not throw this away. This will help me to lay it. I'm gonna use this extra sheet of paper. And since I didn't get out plastic wrap, I'm gonna use the plastic packaging that this comes in and I'll show you what for in a few minutes. Do you need this one? No, I'm gonna use these other ones. A brayer is a rolling pin tool. This one is from Redesign with Prima. All right. I'm only gonna work this in small sections at a time. Wish I had a table. So I'm gonna set her off to the side and I'm gonna go <laughs> ahead and put my adhesive on. Hell hath frozen over. You are using Mod Podge. Mod Podge. I am using Mod Podge. I am. They're Fabric Mod Podge. It's kind of the only product out there made for fabric. I'm gonna lightly sand this. Oops. Do you wanna put any kind of cover over the seat base or no? Um, I told you guys I kind of figured that I'm going to get paint and stuff onto the seat and I'm going to need to blend the paper anyways. So I told you guys in the beginning, I'm assuming that I'm going to need to put more paint on the seat. So I'm already going into that knowing. In fact, even when I painted this white, it was very hard for me to keep it off the seat because I, you have to use so much water on the fabric that it ends up getting sprinkles. Okay, I'm gonna start at this top portion. So I'm gonna put my fabric Mod Podge on, but I'm only gonna put it on the very top. And this is kind of thick. So let me find a putty knife. All right. Get one? Yeah. So I'm kind of gonna putty this on. It's kind of got a skin on it. So I'm gonna dig for the good Mod Podge that's underneath the skin. a little I've used this before it's not a new container ideally I would grab a new one at the fabric store so you don't have to dodge I'm gonna add it this is a water-based product so I'm gonna add a little bit of water to it also um, the paper will also conform to this sort of raised pattern that I have in the fabric Okay, so that's quite a bit on there. And now I just need to spread it out a little bit better. So I'm gonna give it, get it wet and that'll help me to brush it. I don't need it globby or goofy or anything. I want a pretty thin, even coat on here. I don't want it to have 
areas that it's on thicker. So I'm just trying to get it nice and thin and even. And then I'm gonna let this set up while I work on that paper for a minute. I'm gonna carry it down a little bit further than I think I want it and then I'll have an, a nice overlap for when I come back to do the next section. Okay. And like I said, I wish I had a table. So I'm going to come over here. I'm sorry. I'm going to use this table right here, which is another furniture piece. And I'm actually going to back butter this paper a little bit. All right. I'm choosing to back butter my paper for a couple reasons. I want to soften it and the moisture will soften the paper. I'm gonna give it a tiny bit of water and I'm just gonna apply a super thin layer of this glue to the back. And I add a little bit of water to my brush just to thin that out. The water on the brush is working the best. I don't wanna really, I don't want this paper soaking wet because I also don't wanna make it fragile, but I do wanna give it Stretch. It's so funny how paper gets stretchy after you get it wet. I need it to have that stretch. It's also going to help soften the fold marks out of the paper. And then I still have Mod Podge in my brush, so I'm also getting a super paper thin layer of Mod Podge onto the back of this. I'm only going to do this top section like right to her face. I'm going to continue to back butter the paper all the way down, but I'm only going to do it sec one section at a time as I'm working on it. All right. I feel like that's pretty good. Okay, so you can kind of see the top section where I've got the water is a little more wrinkly. It's stretched the paper out a little bit more. And that's going to give me some play in her. Okay, and then I'm going to find where I want to lay my paper. This is right about here. Try to get her centered. I do have some, see how I was able to pick that up? This paper's pretty forgiving. But now I've got to be careful. So decoupage usually takes two hands are better than one. And I'm going to lay this one small section at a time. So ideally, I would have Sean here and I would have him kind of hold this up. I'm going to just, yeah, just, you don't have to do this side. Just keep it from laying. And I'm just going to do one section at a time. So I'm going to grab my spray bottle. I feel like I should be bullfighting right now. I'm going to grab my brush and everything else I need is on the chair. So this is probably blocking you guys from yeah, seeing what I'm doing. Can you hold it low? Can you go, can you go low? Just like, you can go on this side. Okay. Yeah, just like that. I want to fix this placement. And pull, You're okay. Pull it out a little bit more. There you go, because I don't want her face going on. I just want this back. I'll well, just get it where you want now. Okay, and I'm going to start in the center. And I'm going to start working this paper out. Okay, that's, that's perfect right there. Um, this back edge right here doesn't have glue all the way underneath it, so I'll need to come back and just fill that with some glue. Adding a little bit of water so that my brush just kind of glides over the top of the paper and that's helping it to conform to that uh, texture. Pull her face out a little bit. There you go. I don't want this right here. I'm trying to pretend I can see through the camera and still give them a <laughs> Yeah, sorry view. guys. This is a tough process to capture. Can you lift it up I again? and then I'm going to brush yeah. it down. Let me get this, one. Let me get this 
right. Okay. Yep, because I'm gonna I need to add that stretch to lower on the fabric, so I'm gonna have to come back now that I've got this section where I like it. So you can take a uh, can you lower that because they can't see at all what I'm doing. I'm just working this very top of the paper, and I'm gonna take this plastic and I'm gonna work it into the texture that's in the fabric. Okay, the plastic keeps it from having a tension on the surface like if I was rubbing it with my hand might do. Okay, and then as I get to this next section, I need it. to I need to back butter my paper some more. Um, and so for this, can you come hold this up? Mm -hmm. I'm going to give it a little bit of moisture. If I get the fabric Mod Podge on the front too, that's okay because it can be used as a um, as a clear coat over the top. Pick a little bit more up on, on my brush. I've got a little more area here that I can work with. Being super gentle. Is it okay that it falls to the back? Yeah. Okay, I'm kind of making control. this up as I go along, guys. Nope, I need you to hold it okay. so I can do so I can work this. Okay, and I'm paying closest attention to her face. I'm wetting the paper from behind because I want it to have a little more stretch to it. Yeah. There we go. Okay, let me do this other side. You guys are probably gonna have a whole bunch of tips for me, but I'm telling you I'm just doing what works. And I'm just working one section of the paper at a time. Okay, I'm gonna get my plastic wrap. I'm literally gonna work this inch by inch. The second set of hands definitely helps. All right, that got me through her face. All right, the edges of my paper, I don't have glue underneath all the way to the edge, so I'll need to come back. I'm just gonna leave these loose for now and I'll come back and sort of attach those. Can I let her flop down just so you guys can see her face? See how the paper stretches where I get it wet and then it loses the stretch. But I don't want to get this entire paper wet. Yes, we're watching surgery. Yeah, <laughs> it is like watching surgery. Huh? I'm a little nervous too. I've not done this before, guys. I'm just figuring it out as I go. Not done it on upholstery before. I've not laid decoupage on it. <laughs> yeah, it's my paper holding skills. Yeah. It helps a ton. Can you see? Can you see how having a second set of hands helps? Sean's done it before because some of these papers are so big. Um, do I have time to do another section? Sure. Okay, I've got to apply some Mod Podge to the chair. So I'm gonna kind of this. hold her up, and I need to put more Mod Podge because I'm out. Oop! I got some. So from here, I'll literally just go like a couple inches at a time until I get down to the base. And I don't think I'm going to go all the way to the, I don't know, we'll see. Maybe I'll tuck that crease of the paper in the crease of the chair. That might be a good place to hide it. You guys cringing at this? Okay, and then from here, I, I'm not going to be able to show you on camera, but there will be a YouTube video for this. I am going to, can you lift it up anymore? Yeah, right mm -hmm. there. Um, I will clear coat this, but I'm going to let it dry. So I'm sp just spreading my Mod Podge down. This is another probably six or eight inches. And let's wet the back of my paper again. I wonder if I could get away with just the water on the back and not yeah. needing to put the glue on the back. Because I don't really need that glue. I just really need the paper to be wet. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, I think that actually works better. Okay, I've got a little wrinkle here, so I'm going to pick this up. Use the plastic instead. So I can see the, the paper conforming to that damask pattern that's in this fabric. It's actually really cool. Find a smoother place on my. You don't want to rub the paper too much. You, eventually, you'll cause it to tear or to uh, lose some areas of the color. So that got me another few inches down. Go a little bit. Give me a little bit looser. Yep. That got me to about her chest. Super pretty, you guys. So um, for the edges, because I don't have these tacked down at all, can't decide. I'm going to paint up onto the edge of the fabric. My paint isn't going to stop right here. It's going to blend so that I don't have a line. So the only thing I can't decide is if I want to do like a torn edge or do I want to leave it a clean edge. Because I do like how this looks. It looks really nice. Yeah. So I did get some Mod Podge on my chair. I told you guys I figured that was going to happen. It's water-based, it wipes away really easily. So that's a pretty easy cleanup. How does this look on camera, you guys? Are you guys freaking out? All right, you can see the portion that's done. It kind of makes a U shape right here. That's pretty easy to see on camera. Um, the texture that's in her is the texture of my chair. I love Facebook. I'm reading questions, guys. Hang on one second. Everyone holding their breath. I'm holding my breath. <laughs> <laughs> Sean is being a good... Uh, I missed that one. All right, I'll have to read back through some of these. It's going to look amazing. I think she will. I think she will. So this is going to take a while, you guys. My next, my next one, I would have to apply more Mod Podge. And I do think I will try to tuck that seam of the paper down in the seam of my chair where I've got the black. I'll just tuck the seam down there and I'll run the paper all the way to the end. All right, you can probably drop it because I don't have any more Mod Podge on there. And I'll have to just finish. I'm going to finish this all tonight. I'm not going to leave this so part of it's dry and part of it's wet. I need to do it all in one sitting. It's good time. Okay, and then no from here... Camera. I will either decide if I want these torn edges or if I want to keep them straight. Um, and then I'll just, I'm going to paint and I'll blend her in. So all this part of the chair that you see will be painted and she'll be kind of my focal point. All right? You guys with me here or you think I'm crazy? Um, I'll have to read them back. We missed some questions because my helper was uh, helping me. I got some Mod Podge on my seat of my chair. I'm going to wipe that up too. You get going so fast and then the only thing that matters is getting that paper on. Super easy cleanup. Um, what will I coat it with? I think I'm going to try clear coat first. And I'll do kind of a test section. And if I don't like that, then I'll use the fabric Mod Podge as my, as my clear coat too. I definitely recommend getting a new container. I wish this was new and creamy. But as much as you use it. Yeah. It's been sitting in my cabinet for a while. It's working. I need to add that little bit of water to it. Since like 1972. So what do you guys think? <laughs> Am I crazy? I think it's going to be really pretty. So what Michelle, uh, this paper is from Mint by Michelle. I like that. I think it's awesome that you're not afraid to try something new. It's not even just something new. It's something new with hundreds of people watching it's a lot of pressure you guys uh and it's there's always a lot of pressure i always feel a little bit nervous and i'm sure i and i get critiqued on my technique sometimes it's the whatever works method right that's my favorite method to use um this is working it's working the part that i've got laid of course never mind that i need to come down and do um her, from her chest down but the part that i've got laid on there it looks beautiful i'm thrilled with it um Let's see, this paper is called, 
Her name is, her name is, does not have a name on here. Okay, this paper is from Mint by Michelle. It's mintfurniturerevamped.com. Um, I wish this had a name on it. The other one is called Girl with a Loot. And that's one we didn't use, but I don't have a name for this one we are using. Um, trying to think of what else I might, might be able to cover. Anyway, I'm going to finish this tonight. I just probably won't get it painted in. There will be a YouTube video on the full process for the chair. So including the paint, the waxing, I've been recording it all the way through. So all of that will come out on a YouTube video and I'll complete uh, putting this paper on and painting her in and top coating her. Um, but for just the painted portion, you guys saw how easy that was. And then it's just a matter of getting the wax on and it's a lot of arm work. The biggest, this is, this already is nice and soft. Down Lauren here. has a good idea. What? Just call her Brandy. What? Half finished? That's the name of it. Anyway. Yeah. Yeah. If I can get, <laughs> if I can get Michelle the name of paper after, paper after me. All right, you guys, um, I have a new YouTube video coming out tomorrow. Do you guys want to see the piece? No. Nobody does? Nobody, nobody, ever, nobody, wants nobody ever wants yeah, to see your stuff. I know. You guys get a sneak peek of it. Because as long as I still have them out, I'll show it to you guys. All right. Let's go over. We'll go mobile and go see my piece. That will be my YouTube video tomorrow. Is there anything I can't show over here? I don't know. I haven't moved the camera yet. All right. Let me move these guys. I don't want to show these guys. Now can I? Sean's gonna follow me to this messy section of my room. Well, in theory, sorry for a uh, vertigo problem. All right, sickness. so this is my piece for my YouTube channel tomorrow. It's super clean, super smooth. This is One Hour Enamel from Wise Owl, and this is their new color, which is called um, Dark Forest. Deep Forest or Dark Forest? Dark Forest. Um, it's a super dark, rich olive green. And then I use a wash of another color called Fauna up here. Um, they're both from the new One Hour Enamel Luxury Earth Collection, which I have displayed all up here. It's seven colors. Um, and on camera, I'm going to show this being brushed. So you guys can see how One Hour Enamel brushes. It gets great coverage. This is two coats. I'm looking for my favorite book. Your favorite book is this one here. I need, one. I need to read up on some stuff all right sean's favorite book is called a woman's place and last week we read a passage so let's see all right <laughs> oh yeah i'm worried this is like a romance oh, novel oh <laughs> well, then i don't want i i want no part of it i'm like hmm. i don't want no part he then whoa uh, all right, well, this is just the first line of the page. It says, give him, give him carte blanche, and that's what he'll take. <laughs> yeah, okay, I'll agree with that. Um, it, it's a story. It's not like tips I on bet a it is. woman. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I know this is a weird It's like the prelude yeah. to Fifty Shades of Grey Last or what? Last week was good. I don't recommend <laughs> it now. I'm a little worried about it. It's a story. I tabbed a couple, so you, you can go <laughs> yeah. ahead. Uh, all right <laughs> all right you guys so we're gonna put that back i think it might be like a romance novel. Yep. i don't know anyone who's read it let me know so this is going to be my youtube video for tomorrow you guys check out the luxury earth collection from wise all it's a beautiful collection of seven colors i'm making through my way through using them all um so far i love them i will be teaching next month March 3rd through 5th, I will be at the Redesign with Prima showroom in Temecula, California, along with Chelsea from Apple Blossom Way. And we are going to be using Wise Owl Paint and Redesign with Prima products, a whole bunch of stuff. They're hands-on classes, and it's also a retreat style event. So if you're traveling, it gives you the option to travel to my home state of California and stay with us on the Redesign with Prima property, which is a, a beautiful vineyard. Um, they have three houses out there. Beautiful property. And we're going to have a retreat. We're going to hang out and laugh together and have meals together. And there's going to be yoga in the mornings. And we're just going to socialize. And there's going to be time for all that in addition to the classes during the day. 
So you guys, if you want to come um, hang out with us there, I will add a link to those, but it's at uh, redesignwithprima.com. You can find tickets. And um, I'm excited for everybody who's already told me that you guys are coming. I will see you guys next month. And I hope this was helpful. A lot of information on painting furniture and I'll get this all up on YouTube too. All right, you guys, I'm going to check out, check out my YouTube video tomorrow for the process on this guy here um, on how to brush one hour enamel. It's beautifully smooth. It looks sprayed. It looks sprayed. And I did not have to top coat it. That's my favorite part. I'm going to let you guys go. Everyone have a great weekend. Thank you for hanging out with me tonight. Even if I made you have a little heart attack with my decoupage, I think it's really pretty. Um, and I will catch you guys next week. Have a good night.